everyone, this is Matt Touchot with Intro Stats, and today we're looking at one of our first topics in Intro Stats. Uh, last time we just kind of introduced a little bit of uh, what we mean by Intro Stats, what the class, sort of some key topics in the class, but one of the key things that we talked about, what it, it was about analyzing data, right? Data. So we said last time that data is thought of as information in all forms. Right, and today we're going to learn that there's two main types of data. And we're going to kind of learn those two main types of data. Now this is actually super important. A lot of the techniques that we use in statistics are tied to what type of data you have. Okay, so it's really important to know what are the types of data that you could have. Uh, we don't analyze uh, categorical data the way we do quantitative data. Um, relationships between two categorical data sets are different than a relationship between two quantitative data sets. Um, so knowing sort of what type of data you're dealing with is super super important and it kind of lays the foundation for, for a lot of the other stuff we're going to learn. Alright, so let's get right to it. The two types of data. So the first type is called categorical data, categorical data, or some people refer to it as qualitative data. I usually say categorical data, uh, but you will see stat books that refer to it as qualitative. Um, now, categorical data is labels or words that describe people or objects in the data. So you'll see how um, a lot of our data sets that we use in intro stats are usually found in, and summarized in Excel spreadsheets or in any kind of spreadsheet like uh, pages or some kind of spreadsheet program. But think of it like, okay, if I have this Excel spreadsheet and I look at the data itself, the column almost looks like it's made up of words usually. So it's usually made up of words. So think of it as the column of data you're looking at is all made up of words. Okay? So let's look at some examples. So if I ask people uh, in the U.S., what state uh, are you from? And somebody says, oh, I'm from California. And another person says, oh, I'm from Arizona and I'm from Colorado, and this one says I'm from New Mexico, and another person said they're from Colorado, right? Now if you notice, the, the data set's really made up of words or descriptions, something that you're describing the person, something about them, but notice that the data set's mainly made up of words, or in this case, abbreviations of words. Uh, a very common categorical question is something that involves yes or no. Um, like, do you smoke cigarettes? Yes or no? Do you have at least one tattoo? Yes or no? Right? So, first we might ask them, do you have at least one tattoo? And the person, this person said yes, and then this other person said no, and this other person said no, and, and so on. And we have found another person that said yes, and then another person that says no. Okay? So notice the data set again is made up of words. That's uh, categorical data. Okay, categorical data. Usually think of it as data set that's made up of words. I could ask people, what month are you born in? Right? Were you born in March? This person was born in March. This person was born in June. Another person was born in October, January, August, June, and so on. Okay? So notice again, the data set, the column of data looks like a bunch of words. And that's how you know you're dealing with categorical data. So again, as we go through these techniques of how to analyze data, one of the first things I'm going to always refer to is what type of data are we dealing with, okay? So a data set made up of words is categorical data. It's a description, okay? Um, now, there is a, an important note. Sometimes you'll see people uh, use numbers in place of a word. They kind of get lazy. They don't really want to write this words all the time, so they just refer to it as a number. So, for example, in yes-no questions, sometimes you'll refer, you'll see people say, like they might refer to uh, yes, and they'll put, instead of writing the word yes, they'll write a one, and maybe the no is a, a two, or sometimes you'll see zero, like they'll write zero for no's and ones for yeses, kind of like that. 
Now those are numbers in those are numbers, but they're not really measuring something. They're in place of a word. The, the number one means yes and the number zero means no. So somebody's using numbers in place of a word. That's still considered categorical data. Okay? These numbers really aren't measuring something. They're, they're, they're basically just used as a placeholder for a word. Same thing this, and instead of saying, what month were you born in, I could say, oh, someone said they were born in March. They might, you might see someone just write three there, because March is the third month of the year, right? In June, they might write a six. In October, they'd write a ten. In January, they'd write a one. In August, they'd write an eight. And June again, so we'd get six. And so what you'd see is, it might, it might make you think that this is not categorical data, because it's numbers. But it's actually numbers again in place of a word. So even though that even though these would be numbers, we would still treat this and analyze this like it was categorical data. So you have to be really careful of that. Sometimes you'll get um, numbers that are used in place of words, and we still have to analyze it like we would analyze categorical data. So some a good important examples to think about is a zip code, for example. Zip code is a, a number, but it's really, it's sort of a number in place of me describing where you live, right? In the sort of the area you live. Uh, we have zip codes in the U.S. for, for kind of an, a number that tells us you know, the general area where you live. So a zip code, even though it's a number, it's not really measuring something. That's an important distinction. It's not counting or measuring something. It's just sort of telling us where you live. It's almost like a number in place of a written description of where you live. Um, the other ones that can be very tricky are what we call identification numbers. So identification numbers like driver's license number, social security number, student ID number, your health insurance ID number. Now these are numbers, but again they're really just used to identify you. They're not really used to measure or count something. They're not measurement data. Okay, that's a that's an important distinction. So not all not all um, numerical data is actually quantitative. Some of the numerical data you see might be categorical. So you kind of want to have that distinction. Now a lot of people will just kind of take identi identification numbers and put them in their own group because they're really like a group of one, right? It's just the, it's just identifying you. Um, it's not, a lot of times with these kinds of categories, I, I'd want to group people and see, well, how, you know, how many people were born in March and group all the people that were born in October and so on. So these are kind of a, a, a special case, but I still would not treat them as a quantitative data set. I would not think of these as numbers that are measuring something or counting something. These are numbers that are used almost as a category, almost like a category of one. So these kind of all still fall in the categorical data uh, genre. Now, if you're not categorical data, the other one is quantitative data. Quantitative data. Okay, this is numerical measurement data. So it's, it's numbers that are actually measuring or counting something. A good thing to think about too, if you're often disturbed, is this categorical or is it quantitative? Does the numbers have units? Units are almost a good sign that you have quantitative data. Also, would I be interested in thinking about taking an average? Would an average make sense? Let me ask you a question. Would I take the average of zip codes? If I took the average of zip codes, that would just be weird, right? It wouldn't tell me anything. It would, sure wouldn't give me what the, where the average person lives, right? So zip codes are not quantitative. I wouldn't take an average of them, right? So a lot of times in a quantitative data set, you're almost always looking at some kind of type of average. Also, they can be just counts or frequencies from various places or groups and things like that. So if you think of counts or frequencies, uh, does it have units, averages, some kind of numbers that are measuring something? So some prime examples. If I ask people their height, or I measured them with a tape measure, maybe their height in centimeters, or I might do a height in inches. In the U.S., we do a lot of inches. So I asked people their height in inches. That one person was 61 inches, and one person was 64.5 inches, and the next person was 72 inches, and 68 inches, and so on. Now notice this data is numbers, right? 
and it's measuring something. It's measuring the heights of people. It also has units, inches, and I'd really be interested in what the average height of these people would be, right? I could figure out the average height. So that also tells me quantitative. This data set that's made up of numbers would be considered quantitative. I could also look at things like, here's a good example of counts. A lot of times quantitative data are counts. So we might have, the, I might look at the number of cars in various parking lots. So if I look at cars in various parking lots, um, maybe one parking lot had 23 cars in it, and another parking lot had 11 cars, another parking lot had 47 cars, another parking lot had 138 cars, another parking lot, hardly anybody was parked there, it was only 9 cars. Another parking lot was humongous, had 217 cars in that parking lot, and so on. So we can see as here, this is a count, right, from each parking lot, but the data set is made up of numbers, and the numbers really are measuring something, okay? It's not like these numbers where the number was just, um, not, was just describing what month they were born in. This is a number that's actually counting or measuring something, so it's got to be quantitative. I also would kind of think about well, well, what would be the average number of cars in all these parking lots, right? An average sort of makes sense. So those are some things to ask yourself when you're, when you're kind of on the fence about whether um, data is quantitative or not. Okay, so two types of data, categorical data and quantitative data. Make sure you can tell the difference. That's really important. All right, so this is Matt Show and Intro Stats, and I will see you next time.